There was one NWSL game this weekend that featured nine athletes hoping to appear in the Olympics, and it ended with nine goals. So were we watching two overpowered offenses, or was this a defensive disaster? I'm Bridie O'Toole, former player, current fan, and I love to watch film. So let's go see what it's telling us. Let's start by taking a look at the lineups. I've put a little flag next to every player that wants to make the Olympic roster for their team. Uh, subs are up in the corner. So Portland's here in the 4-3-3 with a lot of experience at key positions. And Kansas City, also in the 4-3-3. It's NWSL's favorite formation. But in contrast, less international players and a lot more youth. Uh, Wheeler is a rookie just out of college. Hutton is a rookie foregoing college. And Pfeiffer is a rookie foregoing college. So on paper, we've got a very experienced team coming up against a much younger team. All right, so we're starting off in Portland's defensive third. I want to keep an eye on how their midfield and how their defense is moving in reaction to the ball. All right, so there we go. We have three players trying to do the same thing. And this is the international superstar, Brazilian Bia, wiggles her way out of that situation, gets her head up, sees where the space is, and from there, generate a shot. It's a great start. When you face a lot of shots, you have to take a lot of goal kicks. you got to win these. And it's unusual from Christy and Sinclair there. Kansas City just looks hungrier. Bia, again, that's enough to generate a shot. So first 10 minutes of the game were, were like this. It was just relentless. Intensity continues, and, you know, here we are 10 minutes later, but Portland's still kind of looking the same. So we're seeing them not really press, not really pressure too much. Sam Coffey does there, but then everybody else is, is not really as on their toes as she is. And then this drives me nuts. No one's doing anything. Kansas is just allowed to hold the ball there. And yeah, Kansas is just having plenty of time to lift their head up and find options. And they're going to play that ball all night where they send it out wide because it's been there. Now this for me is interesting. At this point, these two players have a read on this. They can tell that this is going to land outside of the box and the goalkeeper is not going to be able to pick it up. So for Dabinia, that's a really good cue, really good trigger for her that she should be pressing hard. Even if she doesn't win the ball, it's going to force a turnover and be positive for her team. Defender's very aware of that, right? Gets low, starts blocking her off, says, hey, you can come out and kick this nice and safely. I'm going to take care of her. But crucially, this was communicated with body language, it appears, and not actual words, because the keeper backs off. And I don't think she even sees Dabinia there. Crazy. It looks like a really easy tap-in, but DiBernardo does do something very smart here uh, before she puts that in the net. Her defender, right, is ahead of her, so she can see, see the run. So she's showing you, hey, this is run A that I'm making. But once her defender loses sight of her, she's going to make a decision, change, do run B instead. So we see there, boom, changes her angle. And just kind of slips behind her defender. Gets a little bit of separation. That's enough to make it just look like a really, really easy tap-in. Good goal. All right, so same thing continued. And boom, way too easy way too easy for Kansas City. And if it looks way too easy, it's because it was way too easy. Look at this ball when it's released. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Portland players, all in this little trapezoid shape. And our two other players are our goalie and Sophia Smith, who's way up the field. So this shape here is not really covering a lot, right? You've got all this in here, and then you've got anything outside. Very composed finish, but just way too easy, complete defensive breakdown. So it's not like Portland didn't have the ball. You know, they did have the ball at times. Let's take a look at what they were doing when they did. Right, Sam Coffey firstly looking much better than everybody else. And Sophia Smith kind of going on an exploratory dribble here, right? What do I see? 
Doesn't like it, so she hands it off. Back to Sam Coffey. Nice little read, but doesn't like what she sees, hands it off. Exploratory dribble again. What can I find? What's going on? Who's going to move? Doesn't like what she sees. Makes a little move. Doesn't like what she sees. So it's just, it's not going anywhere. Everybody looks scared. And then this, that one just kills me, right? Sam Coffey saying, guys, I'm trying. I am trying here. Someone give me a little bit of help. And then Moultrie is just walking, right? She's just walking. So Portland just, they look scared. They look slow. And balls like that are what happens when players get frustrated, right? You're saying, we've just passed the ball 15 times. Nothing has happened. I'm going to boot it up there. Go for this 50-50 ball. And Sophia's like, excuse me, you really expect me to get this? I'm not doing that. That's like the Selly pose, but for I don't want that ball. It stinks. Now this clip I pulled because I want to compare and contrast the two strikers um, on the two different teams. So this ball, it's a little bit choppy here, right? And then Portland does a nice job playing to the whistle. Fleming is going to play this out to Sophia Smith over here. And she's in an interesting spot. She's in this nice little space, which I like. But we know that uh, one of two things are going to happen, right? This ball is going to get played to her. And either both of these defenders are going to collapse on her or one of the defender is going to collapse on her, and then this other defender is going to start working on blocking the lane. So she's not going to have a lot of time when this comes in, and she kind of backs away from the ball. You need to be a little bit more definitive there about making a move, making a strong cut, right? She knows that there's a good possibility both of these defenders are going to collapse on her. Maybe a little bit of a foul. But it lets Kansas City go right back to exactly what they've been doing, which is distributing the ball. And then Bia. Absolute rocket. But there's a lot of layers to this goal, so I want to go back and take a look at some of them. Now, one of my absolute favorite things, uh, one of you asked in one of the other videos about offsides, how that reflects on you know player tactically. And Bia's going to do something really, really smart here. Uh, she recognizes that there's a potential lobbed ball or a potential through ball that she could get on the end of. And with those balls, timing is everything. So she's going to start the run, but she's going to realize the timing isn't there. The ball doesn't get played when she wants it. And so she has to adjust her run. And she does this very nice thing where she curves her run, changes the direction. It keeps her onside. And without it, this goal doesn't happen. So there it changes it. Boom. It's really nice. The finish also absolutely spectacular, right? She's just out muscling her opponent here. Muscle, 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 five foot eight thing. That's a very good goal. So what motivates a superstar more than watching another superstar show them up, right? Portland's press starting to look a little bit better, more energetic. And Sophia Smith says, no, no, you're not the only star here, Bia. And I love this, right? Let's pick up the ball. Let's get right back to it. This shot from Smith is, is awesome for a couple reasons. Um, really like how she just squares up into this defender, just attacks very directly, and it's that cut into the space there, bang. It just creates this little window here, because we can see the defender was doing a very nice job, right? Blocking her lane. She's in the lane. She's in the lane. Nope, not anymore. Really good. And, you know, that's pretty far outside the box. Those aren't easy. It's got some real power on it. That was a really nice shot. So Portland went in a half time with all the momentum. Uh, tactically, they decide, let's make a change. Let's take out Christine Sinclair. We saw her kind of miss a few balls there. And they bring in her Canadian compatriot, Janine Becky. And then Kansas City is also going to make a change. You know, Bia's been working really hard, also played in the Gold Cup, managing her minutes. So we're going to take her out for the 16-year-old Pfeiffer. And, you know, Kansas City has the kickoff, but I think Portland is immediately looking better here. This press looks more energetic. It looks more coordinated. And all of a sudden, Kansas City are not passing the ball around the same areas they were quite so easily. This looks a lot more choppy for them. 
so instantly better and ends in a in a little chance fair that has to be put out for a corner. So yeah, Portland are coming back looking much nicer. And then all it takes, woo, all it takes is one shot. So yes, all the momentum is in Portland's hands. So uh, never change for Portland, and I think this was a good one. Moultrie comes out for Sugita. I think that needed to happen. Kansas City, right? Take Di Bernardo out, and we're going to take out Spanstra. International Lavoisier comes in, but oh my goodness. Chewinga, number six. What a player to watch. I had to do some, some deep, deep Googling to try and figure stuff out and what was going on there, uh, but it seems like she's come from PSG. Nobody really knew who she was until the last year, but she is the world's leading goal scorer, men or women. So it means across club, international games, she scored more goals than anybody else. And she is going to interrupt this game immediately. This is here out here, and she is just an absolute force to watch. So heavy press, bothering Portland, helps them win that ball. Uh, this is also something I, I always really, really like to see, right? Even if you're not going to win this ball, you know 90% of the time as a forward, you are not going to win this ball, but you really just want to disrupt that. And there's nothing better than disrupting it and it landing immediately to a player. That is perfect. So yeah, Kansas City looking really nice again, throwing up some more of those 50-50 balls. And what do we have here? Is this a defensive breakdown? I don't know. Honestly, I think Chewinga is just ridiculously fast. I mean, look at this. Look at the acceleration. Not much you can do there. Goalie does need to hold on to the ball. That's a whole other story for a different day. All right, so not wanting to be shown up. Who's going who's gonna to come out and make a play? None other than this Sophia Smith herself. And this is just a moment of pure magic. Dribbles half a field on her own. Nobody quite giving her the support she needs. Actually, that's not fair. That's not fair. Sukita does do a good job here. It's just, um, I'm not sure she even really knew it was going to be there. But she's hungry, right? Sophia Smith's looking a lot better. She's looking very annoyed. But problem was, Sophia Smith looked like maybe she was one of the only Portland players that had, had really woken up and had that fire in her. So Kansas City, back to doing what they do, right? Find that space, send that long ball. And they're going to do the same thing again. Find the space, send the long ball. And nice touch from Chewinga there. Just play it off and, and get going. Try to make something else happen. Again, it's just looking choppy. Portland are trying, but they just are not really winning balls when they're getting a foot on it. Lovely turn there from Lola Bonta. Superb awareness of the space in front of her. And this, to me, I love when players do this. It's such an elite trait. She has a lot of deception in her body language right now. So her hips are telling you, I'm going to go here. I'm going forwards. And she just plays that little ball off across her body. Lots of time and space for this cross-in. Great control to bring that down. Amazing shot, and that's a 16-year-old. A 16-year-old with that level of composure. Ah, it looks like an easy shot, but it is not. And the other thing I really, really like about this is just the intelligence and the trust with her teammates, right? Anytime you have a loose ball like this, we've got one, two, three, maybe even four people that might want to play it. You always should let the player with momentum take the shot. So in this case, she's got the clearest, straightest look at goal. She's coming at it the most straight. It should be her ball. And these two are going to go for it, but they're going to recognize that she has a better shot. And even though she's 16, got to let her take it. Really fantastic. Really love to see that. Really exciting for the league. Not a whole lot of time left in the game now, so Portland really got to get something going. And this is looking a lot better. Players are making themselves available. Look at this from Sugita. What a little run. And even if the ball gets away from her, right, she's, she's just staying on it, staying active, trying to win it back. It's still choppy, but it's at least the intensity is there. 
a lot more active movement from the players. You know, this is, does not look like the same team passing in the first half. And here we go. Here we go. She's ready. Great little cut. And I have to put that one out for a corner. So this is the corner that comes out of it. And um, Kansas City lined up here in a zone defense, right? So she's got this zone. She's got this zone. We do that all the way through. I don't know if this was a design from Portland or if they just noticed it and exploited the space, but she's uncovered, or at least if she is covered, it should be this player or this player who already have someone in their zone. So a little bit of a breakdown and potential opportunity there at the far post. And sure enough, high quality finish. Might have been the nutmeg even. Let's see. Yeah, it was aren't easy. It was aren't easy. There's a lot of pace on that ball. Great job keeping it down. And again, pick it up, run it back. Let's go get the next one. I'd love to see it. It's funny, it's the same 50-50 ball we saw earlier, but getting on the end of it now. And then Miss Sophia Smith, little move. And it's the deception again. Talked about deception with Lola Bonta earlier, but here it is with Sophia Smith. I love what she's going to do. As she's over here, she's going to make two little wriggly shoulder moves, you know, trying to, trying to shake off her defender, see if she can find an opening. But she doesn't. And the genius of this for me is her defender is thinking that she is doing the best job in the world right now. She's thinking, I'm showing Sophia Smith outside. She's going out. She's going out. I'm winning this battle. And right when you think, you know, oh, I'm, I'm showing her the door. She turns around and just releases that. It's such a deceptive shot because she gets her hips completely turned, right? 90 degree turn of the hips. Really nice. So with 15 minutes left in the game, Portland's trying to do something tactical. They want to put a bunch of fresh players in at once and really ramp up the pressure on KC. Unfortunately, they submitted this substitution card and included Sophia Smith before her goal. So she scores a goal. She's building all this momentum. She's on this great upwards trajectory, and then they have to take her out. So it was unfortunate. I really would have liked to see that story arc play out because I think she could have had a bunch more goals easily. All right, so Kansas City at this point, they're trying to close it out, and I don't really know what they're doing. They kind of look like they're still attacking. Chewinga there, I don't know what they would have done without her. Her speed was great, really helped them close things down. But yeah, it's like, hey, let's get the ball out into space. Let's complete a bunch of passes back and forth in little triangles, and let's kill some time. But they kind of look like, I don't know, do they want to go score another goal? No, Lavoger is wasting time. That's great. She's wasting time. But Labonta, I don't know why that ball needs to be played up there. So they're kind of in two minds right now. Do they want to kill time? Do they not want to kill time? And remember, Portland's got three subs, a lot of fresh players. So yeah, winning the ball easily, distributing the ball, and that is a world-class shot right there. Janine Becky just coming back from injury. The Canadian, very scary opposition for any U.S. defender to play against because look at this. My goodness. The way her head's down, where she is on the pitch, you just, you just do not expect that. And I, I do think the defenders could have done a little bit better here. It's not helpful, right, having two players try and tackle from behind. So I think somebody needs to be a bit more active about blocking the lane. Not a tackle, but just blocking the lane. So now we've got a very energetic Portland picking up this ball. They're ready to go. They've got seven minutes of time left. But, you know, this is kind of how the remainder of those seven minutes went. They're, they're trying to connect balls. Kansas City does decide they still want to win. And it was just choppy. It was just seven minutes of choppy football with, with Portland desperately trying to win that ball back. And that's it. That's full time. 5-4. Not a result anybody was expecting, but my goodness, what a good one to watch if you like goals. Um, let's go debrief. So I asked at the beginning of this video, are we watching brilliant football? Are we watching terrible football? 
I'm going to be a bit of a politician and I'm not going to answer my own question because I think it was a little bit of both. I think Kansas City played brilliantly defensively, but they just didn't have the consistency to close the game out at the end the way you'd want to see. And then Portland looked pretty lethargic for a while, but once they got into the game, they demonstrated some real tenacity. So I think both teams were anchored by the performances of, of true superstars, and it makes me excited to watch a, a lot more of, of both teams throughout the season. Really hope you enjoyed this video because it's part of a series I want to do where I'll recap one NWSL game a week, trying to get people more familiar with the players and interested in the league. And then the other type of videos I want to do are those more detailed player studies where I look at someone over a, a period of several games. And those are a little bit more time consuming, but I, I really do love those ones. So I think it's just balancing, right? We want to see the players we love, but we also want to learn some new folks and, and get familiar with the league. So open to any and all feedback on that format. Um, in that area, thank you so much for all the comments you've been leaving. It is such a joy to go through them. I, I love you sharing your insights with me. I love knowing what players you're interested in. It's just been so cool um, getting a chat with all of you, so I hope we can keep that up. All right, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.